All right, good morning everyone. Uh, just to alert you, uh, I'm suffering from bronchitis, so I'm going to keep going as long as my voice holds out. All right, today is day 62. We're going to first go over the JavaScript test that you took a couple weeks ago, that being JS Hot Number 3, Chapters 5 to 7. And then we will begin on the React portion of the class. As said, I will lecture no later than 10 o'clock so that you'll have at least half the period to finish up on your JavaScript final. All right, we will discuss React in detail and build our first React app tomorrow, and we will continue to do that on Wednesday and Thursday. Friday will again be a lab. All right, your JavaScript final is due tonight by midnight. I know people have been contacting me. I'm having problems. I'm having this and I'm having that. Get it in as soon as you possibly can is the best thing I can tell you. All right. So with that said, let me just mention one thing, and that is let's 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 bring up the final to start with. All right. So as it says, you were supposed to create a fully functional and responsive four page website on the rock, paper, scissors game. All right. And it should have a JavaScript folder. It should have a CSS folder. Page one, as it says, should have a JavaScript carousel on it near the top of the page. What you put on that is up to you, but it really should be something that goes with the rest of the site. And that was 25 points. Page two is an FAQ page. If you just literally Google rock, paper, scissors, you can find that there's um, rules for the game, et cetera, and all sorts of stuff that you can grab when you do that. As it says, you can write that either in vanilla JavaScript or jQuery. It's your choice. And again, it should be set up very similar to the FAQ that we looked at in class that we did with BMI. All right, page three should be your actual game. You should use vanilla JavaScript, all right, to create the game. You're playing against the computer. The computer will generate a random number, one for rock, two for paper, three for scissors. After the computer has generated its, no, its number, you'll put in your own number and you'll figure out who won. As it says at the end of each game, clear the text boxes for your choice, for the computer choice and clear the image at the bottom of the screen, which has who won. Keep a running total of the number of user wins and the number of computer wins. Page four should be a contact page. Gave you a couple, you know, we did one of these in class that you can use, or you can use the one that's in the book, the register application on 210 through 213 in your book. All right, you should also set up basically a validation summary in there at the top so that if you know all fields are supposed to be um, required and if you leave one off you'll let the user know that add a clear button to there so when you click it it waits five seconds and as it says it removes any errors you might have clears out the form fields by setting them to their default values clears any kind of a thank you image or whatever you put in there when you're done, as mentioned, validate all four pages and validate your CSS. And as mentioned there, the final 25% or whatever you want to call that 12.5%, it'll be determined by the look and feel of the site. Now, next week, I'm not sure when, but probably Monday next week, I'm going to show you we're actually going to look at rock, paper, scissors and how it could be built in different ways including building it in React, all right? So this is due tonight, all right, by midnight in your GitHub repo. So with that said, the first thing I wanted to mention to you, I'm not going to go over it right now, but there is a really good tutorial on React out on W3 Schools. So if you go out to w3schools.com slash React, you'll find this. Now, probably the most important part of this tutorial, and I'm not going to go over it now, but I just wanted to show you this, is where it says React ES6. 
All right, and they talk about the stuff that's in here. All right, I'm not going to read them. You can see all the stuff on your screen right now. But these eight or nine things that they discuss in here are going to be of paramount importance for those of you. I mean, everybody eventually is going to take the AWD 1111 class, and you use all of this stuff a lot in that class. So we're going to look over that tomorrow. I'm not going to go over it today. All right. The other thing that, like I mentioned, let's take a look at this was your test that you were given a couple weeks ago. Page one was a login page that if you put in anything except, all right, anything except admin at example.com for the email and password for the password, all right, if you put anything else into both those fields, it should have come back with a message that said that email and password doesn't seem right, try again. If you left one or both fields blank, it should have come up and said you seem to have forgotten your username and password. And if you put in admin at example.com for the email and password for the password, it should have come back and said, welcome back admin. The error messages should have been in red. The uh, welcome back method message should have been in green. And you should have used Bootstrap to style the page. All right. So I'm going to bring up mine so you can take a look at it. So let's bring up both the index.html page and the login page. Well, that should come up and it's not, but there we go. All right. So taking it from the top, let's just run it first. Pretty simple interface. OK, I made it bigger so you can all see it. If I leave this off, I get you seem to have forgotten your username and or password. If I put in, for example, JP Scott at Rankin.edu and hello, which are both wrong. That email and password doesn't seem to be right. Try again. Finally, if I put in admin at example.com and the word password in here, then in green it says, welcome back admin. All right, even if you had problems with this, I personally see no reason why you couldn't have gone and at least built the interface in here. All right, so you can see this is my head section. As always, we got a title, and I all I brought in was Bootstrap CSS. I didn't even put any of my own in here. All right, and this whole thing was put in there and it could have been done in different ways. I did it as a form. Most people seem to have done it that way. All right, and you had in there a label with email and a, an input for email. All right, a label for password and an input for password. All right, that pretty much was it. Okay. And you can see I've got a success message. That's the one in green and an error message. That's the one that is in red. They're both in divs, but they get put in programmatically. So at the beginning of the program, neither one of them is set. In other words, both of those divs are invisible. So for the login.js file, and this could have been done many ways. I, you know, I should have probably come in here and made an alias for document dot get element by ID. I did not. So notice that I've got things in there for the form itself. For the email input, for the password input, for the success method message rather, and for the error message. That's what's up here. Then I added an event listener to the form itself. All right, so when the form is submitted, it's going to call this, and what am I doing? Well, the first thing I'm doing is I am preventing the default because I don't want the form to go anywhere. We've talked about this several times. There's nothing new in there. All right, next. These, again, are our two areas that are going to show possible 
information, the success message, which says welcome back admin, and the error message, which either said there seems to be a problem or your password and login don't match or whatever. All right. Then we took what was in the text box for the email and put that into a JavaScript variable. We took what was put into the password input into a JavaScript variable. We checked to see, you can see how short this is. We checked to see if either one or both happened to be empty. If either one was empty, all right, you seem to have forgotten your username and or password, all right? So I checked first for an empty condition. I checked next for a success condition. Now, should I have checked for something and put success last? I could have. The order in which you put these technically didn't matter. But if the email was admin at example.com and the password was password, then notice that it's success message dot inner text. Whereas if I left it off, all right, or I put in something wrong in both those cases, it was error message dot inner text. So that was the entire thing. That's all I was looking for on this first one right here. So literally, as I mentioned, all right, there's probably 20 lines if you remove the blank lines in here, 20 lines of JavaScript, and that was it. And the rest of it, again, was setting up the form, which again, shouldn't have been a big task for anybody in here. So that was the first one. All right, then next, number two. That was the to-do app. And again, part of being able to take this test and making sure you get the best grade possible was to read everything that was in here. All right, it said pre-populate the to-do list with five tasks. So it should have five things in there, anything you wanted to put in there. Allow the user to add tasks to the list and they should have gone down at the bottom underneath the five that were there. Allow the user to remove any task from the list. And as soon as you remove it, update the task list immediately. Do not allow the user to add blank tasks. All right, finally, use bootstrap icons or font awesome icons for the delete button. Mine came out looking a little funky, but it does work. Finally, use bootstrap five to style the page. So let's bring that one up. Close that, it's the to-do. All right, and again, let's run it first. So there's mine. This was supposed to be a trash can for some reason. It just doesn't look like one, but notice when you click, each time you click that, they get removed. If I add a new task, it goes down there. That's exactly what you were supposed to do. All right, so if we take a look at what was in there, again, one thing you'll notice, 20 lines of code, not a lot of JavaScript code that you were asked to put in here. This was bringing in the bootstrap, this was bringing in the font awesome icons. The order in which you put those two lines did not matter. Again, I used none of my own CSS. Here, as the, say, as the comment says, I pre-populated the list with five tasks from the get-go. All right. So all it was was just uh, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. All right. Then we had a button here, an add button to add a new task. Here was our bootstrap JavaScript. I put in a little of that and our JavaScript to do. So let's look at that. Again, I could have easily made an alias here. I did not. So we set one up for the list itself. One for the new task we were putting in, one for the add task button. 
All right, we also have a couple of event listers here. The first one was for the add task button. As you can see, when we click it, what are we doing? Well, we're grabbing everything that is that we put in the text box. And notice we're also trimming it. Why? Because we were told not to allow a task that was empty. So if I do bring this in and I run it again and I try adding a new task, notice nothing happens. I'm clicking add and nothing's happening. Even if I come in here and hit the space bar, again, nothing happens because I call trim. All right, it's only when I put something in here that I indeed get it to do added. All right. So if there is text in there, what are we doing? Well, what we want to do is create a new list item. And that's exactly what we're doing right there. All right, whoops. We're setting up, as it says there, a name that's gonna be associated with that. And we're setting up in here, this was setting up that trash can or what was supposed to be a trash can. All right, the little red thing that's next to it. This is appending it to our list. This is making sure that once I add the task and I click the button, that whatever appears in my add task window disappears. So again, notice that as soon as I type in hello and I click add, I've got that and there is nothing in here other than the placeholder text that I put in that basically said to edit a task. All right. And we also, or I also set up an event list, all right, with the actual to-do list itself, which said whenever I click on one of the elements that's in there to remove it. All right, if you wanted to, you could have put a confirm, a JavaScript confirm in there that said, are you sure you wanna delete this to do? I didn't do that, but you could have, all right? Then finally, let's look at the third one, the last one that was in here, that was the up down one. And again, probably the simplest one on the test, but when I open it, there it is. Again, I've got my screen blown up to 250%. That's why it looks so big. Every time you click up votes, notice that's going up, and so is that. Every time you click down votes, that's going up, and that's going down. All right, again, hopefully just looking at that in that way, it makes sense. All right, again, a fairly, fairly simple interface right here. All right, and you'll notice I put some paragraphs in there. As it says, that's my total number of upvotes, my total number of downvotes, and my score. You could have done this in a lot of different ways. All right, so here we've got a button, the green button, and that's when you clicked up. Here's the red button for when you click down. All right, and then as far as the up, down, again, 25 lines of text. So again, first five lines were again setting up the document dot get element by ID. All right, one for the upvote button, one for the downvote, downvote button, one for what we're putting in there for upvotes, one for what we're putting in for downvotes, and one for that score. All right. I made these lets because they're constantly going to be changing. All right. The upvotes and the downvotes, you know, basically it's the same routine. You are incrementing the upvote or downvote counter by one. Then you're calling update score, which as it says right here, updates the score by taking your current upvotes and subtracting from it your current downvotes and then populating the three paragraphs accordingly. 
That was it. All right. Now, I'm going to go on, but I just want to mention to you, all right, this one that's right here, this up, the up down counter. One of the first things we're going to do tomorrow is I'm going to rebuild that and I'm going to rebuild it as a React app. It'll be a little bigger, all right? But when we do these React apps this week, I'm not going to be concerned about CSS. So in other words, my apps are not going to be pretty apps, all right? They'll all function, they'll all work, but I'm not concerned with them being pretty. That's not what this part of the course is about, all right? Okay, now one of the things I forgot to send you this morning, but I'm going to send you later today, are 10 PDFs, all right? I got sent these from a site that I was out at, and I'm not gonna read them to you, but they're all on React, all right? JavaScript, you should know, React cheat sheets, et cetera. I've looked at a few of them, they're pretty good, all right? So we're gonna take a look at those sooner and not later, all right? But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna come in here and talk to you at least a little bit about what React is, why are we doing this, et cetera, all right? React is a JavaScript library. It is specifically set up for you to be able to create user interfaces. Now, what React is, is it's part of what's known as the MERN stack, M-E-R-N. All right, I may have mentioned this before. I don't remember if I have or not, but even if I did, you're gonna hear it again. The whole AWD 1111 class is all about the MERN stack. All right, and MERN is Mongo, DB, it's a database system you'll learn about. All right. The E, so that's the M. The E is for express. The R is react. And the N is for what's called Node.js. In fact, react is often referred to as react.js. All right. So the reason that we're going through this now is because some of you in this class come spring will be taking the AWD 1111 class. Those of you who are not, those of you who will be taking the AWD 1100 C-sharp programming class, well, then you will be taking, the schedule is, you will be taking this class during summer. All right, just so you have an idea what's going on now when you go and create react applications there's different ways you can do this i'm going to only show you one way why because all this is meant to be all this is meant to be is for lack of better words pretty much just an introduction to react there is no way to teach you everything there is in react and in fact, you won't learn everything there is in React in the AWD 1111 course. We could make our own React course easily. All right. But what I want to show you, you don't have to do this. All right. But let's pretend right now I was going to create my first React app. OK, and that's actually what I'm going to do for you right now. Now, there's different ways of doing what I'm about to show you. The first way is I can come in here. Let's say I'm going to create a brand new, our first React app. So I'm going to come in here and create a new folder and call it first React app. That's totally fine. Then I can come in here and run some tools and create it like that. Not a problem. All right. The other thing I can do is not even have a folder and just tell it to create the app. And when it creates the app, tell React to create the folder. All right, now I'm gonna show you sort of a hybrid of those. And what I mean is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna close both instances of code. All right, and now 
I'm going to come in here and I am, I'm going to start up code right here. So I'm going to say open with code. And there's nothing in here right now. I think you'd agree. Well, it's it's my desktop. So let's let's just come in here and I, I'll I will create a new folder. So a new folder, and I'll just call it first react app. When you're creating stuff like this, don't put blank spaces in it because you're just asking for trouble. So I'm calling this first React app. Now, what we're used to doing is if we want to bring up, for example, a Git window, is we come in here, we right mouse click, and we choose Git Bash here. And that's totally fine to do. But to show you that there is another way of doing this, I am going to come in and I'm going to come in here and right mouse click and open this folder that's empty with code. All right. Now, when I do this, I want to open what's called a new React, or I'm sorry, a new terminal window, which is basically just a new GitHub window. Now, I could just go back, move this down, and open that up like I showed you before. Not a problem. But another way that I can do this is to click up here and choose either terminal, new terminal, or view terminal. And guess what I have down here? This is a new GitHub window that I just opened up. Now, if you do this, it's going to open up a terminal window, but it will not be a GitHub window. There's a few different little things you got to do that I'm not going to talk about right now. But the point is right now, what I have in here, and I believe you'd all agree with this, what I have in here is just an empty project. First React app with nothing in it. It is totally empty if you look up here. There's nothing in there. All right. So I'm going to go and create the project, not magically, but I'm going to create the project automatically by just coming in and basically typing in a command right now. All right. That's literally all that I'm going to do is to come in here and type in a command. All right. Fine. So what is that command? Well, it's to come in here and I'm right here. I'm already where I want to be. But the first thing I have to do, you will have to do this to do React in here, is I have to verify that I have Node.js loaded on this machine. I do, but I want to show you how you can verify that. I'm going to come over here where it, in my Windows search box and I'm going to type in here, control panel and hit enter. Now, what it shows me in here are a lot of things. What I'm concerned with is the one that says programs and features that's right here. So I'm going to double click on this, and it shows me everything that's loaded on my machine. And if I go down to the ends, there's no JS. And I loaded it right before the semester ended. Uh, not, it's not the semester, I'm sorry, right before our break. But let me remove it and reload it. So I'm going to uninstall it. Probably take 30 seconds or so to remove. <coughs> yes, I want to remove it. And as soon as that one goes through, then you'll notice the Node.js here will disappear because it's been uninstalled. Like I said, it will not take very long to do this. There, it's done. So now I can come back in here and I can go out to the internet and type in here nodejs.org. All right, and download the newest, latest, and greatest LTS, which means long-term support. Don't download that one. All right, because that's still that's still in in test mode. So click on here. Boom. Now it is. It may come back and ask me again. Are you sure you want to run this, etc.? But it should take just a matter of seconds to go through and do this. So what it's doing is it's taking the 
executable file, which I'll have to run, there it is. And it says it's done. So if I click on that right now, welcome to the node setup wizard, and I'm just going to keep clicking next. Next, accept, next, next, next. I don't care about that. Next, and install. Yes, I want to install it. So you can see that took even less time than it did to uninstall it. So I'm going to click finish and I can close. Oh, I can leave that open. It won't matter. But if I go back to control panel again, now I've got Node.js should be back here. I might have to refresh it to see it. But there's Node.js with today's date on it. All right. So why did I have to do that? Because what I want to do now is to run a node command to get this to start working. All right, and if you say, I don't understand, then please just watch. All right. So I'm going to come back here and in here, again, nothing in here, but I'm going to cut type in here, npx create react app. I'm telling it to create a react app since I'm already in the folder where I want it to be, and it's already named, I just put in a period. So which says create a brand new React app right here. And watch, because this will take upwards of one to two minutes, but watch and you'll notice how this will start filling up over here. Now it's installing a bunch of stuff and you notice it's starting to install some stuff up here as well. When it's done, it'll give me a, a happy hacking message down on the bottom here and then I'll know I'm done. Now it's added a, a folder with a bunch of folders in it. We're gonna talk about all this in a minute. <clears throat> so it should be just about finished, happy hacking. All right, now I'm going to take this and make this smaller because I don't need all that room there. All right, and I want to move this down so you can see what's all in here. Now, I don't expect you to remember all this, but I expect that either in spring when you take the class or in summer, we go, oh yeah, that's what he was talking about. All right, the first thing that's in here is there is a folder that's called node modules. If I click on it, what you'll notice is it's pretty doggone big. In fact, if I go back out just so you see this, here's my first React app. It's 232 meg, and I haven't even added any of my own stuff in it yet. Most of that 232 meg that's in there is in node modules. If I go and highlight that and click properties, that's virtually the whole thing is in there. If I look at the rest of it, all right, 715K. So most of it is in node modules. So fine, okay. So you just told us node modules. What the heck is that? It's a folder. And that folder contains all of the dependencies that your project relies upon. Now, you don't have to worry about most of it because a lot of times what you're going to be doing in a React program is just putting in a lot of boilerplate code and boilerplate commands. But that's what's going to make all this stuff happen in here. All right. So again, node modules, the, the public, it's a public folder. It holds items. Sometimes you're going to need 
some of that stuff in your program. All right. It's just it's it's a necessary evil. Now, I just said it's a necessary evil, but believe it or not, if you create a project using React and you put that project out on the internet, you don't want to include node modules. All right. You don't want to include that. Now, you might say, well, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. All right. Because when a person goes and runs commands to get your project working, what will happen is this node modules will be recreated for them. All right. And again, if that doesn't make sense, just hold on a bit. All right. All right. So the next thing that's in there is another folder that's named public. And if we open that up, you can see what's inside of here. Well, what is there? There's a favicon of a star. There's a file called index.html right here. There's a logo, and that's the React logo. There's another React logo that's bigger. There's a manifest.json file that's got some system settings in it. And there's a robot.txt file. So what the heck is all this? Well, first of all, Technically, you don't need this. You don't need this. You don't need this. We could just get rid of them. I'm going to leave them, but you could get rid of them. All right. The reason that you've got this file in here, these two ping files, these logos are when you run the program, what you're going to see on your screen is a picture of one of the logo files. If you don't get it, you will in just a moment. All right. Now, what's the most interesting thing about this program, any program here, in my opinion, for whatever this, what I'm about to tell you, is or is not worth. All right. The mo the, the, the kind of most important thing is this index.html file that you see right here. You know what all this stuff is, but everything that you do Everything you put into a React program goes right there. That's it. So you've got to make sure that somewhere in your React program, you refer to something with an ID of root so that you're able to put whatever it is in there. The rest of the stuff that's up here, you know what every single bit of this means. There is nothing new in there, nothing. They do do a little bit of coloring and stuff. That's not important. They set up the icon, et cetera, that you just saw up here, all right? And when we come in here, again, Apple Touch icon, all right? Then they explain what this manifest file is right here. It says it provides metadata. What the heck is metadata? Metadata is data about data. That's literally what metadata means. It's data about data. You've been using meta tags all semester. This is just another one. And this file holds meta tags in it. All right. This brings that file in, basically, that manifest.json file. Then there's a bunch of comments in here, and if you don't like them there, you can remove all the comments. I leave them in, but you don't have to. There's the title. This is the no script, so if the person does have JavaScript disabled, it's just gonna bring them a message saying, you've got to enable it in order to see the program. Then you've got this line I mentioned before div id equal root. And when you look at it, that's the entire body of your program. A, little, a few more comments and it ends this. All right. Okay. Now, I I've shown you all this. Remember that robots file, what that is, what that robots file is, is you are letting source um, you are letting any particular uh, engine or any particular 
search engine like Google, Bing, et cetera, know, hey, you don't have to go through this file. All right, you don't have to go through whatever is in here when you are spidering the website or going through and looking at the website. All right, so that's what's in public. The next thing that's in here is source. This is basically where virtually everything for the program will go. All right, so there is an app.css file. And what does that have in it? Well, if you look at it, it might not mean a lot to you, but virtually everything that's in here that I've just highlighted, so everything other than what's right there is make sure is to make sure that when you start running your application that you get the little that that you get the react logo and it moves around a little bit that's it so usually one of the first things i do and i'll do it in a bit is to remove this because you don't really need it all right then you've got app.js this again is the boilerplate stuff that you put in there, but you know we're going to remove that in just a couple minutes. All right, so that's what it is. So you've got app.css and app.js. The app.test, we don't do any testing in here. We're going to remove that file in a minute. Then you've got index.css. All right, what many people do is either they have an app.css and they remove the index.css or they have an index.css and they remove the app.css. I'm going to leave them both in here for now just so you can see them. This index.js, all right, why does this matter? Because right here, this is telling us to render, remove, remove that, Look at this, render document ID root, that thing I just showed you. This says grab everything in the app.js file and put it in there. Render it, show it to me. And again, this might be making very little sense to you and that's to be expected. This is your logo, all right? This web vitals is if you wanna go in and do more testing. So there's testing and stuff that you can provide, and there's more stuff in here. All right, I'm gonna clean this up in just a little bit so you can see what's happening. All right, okay. Then we've got a git ignore file. This will become very important as you work your way through here. This is all the stuff that you do not have to load when you are bringing in your React program. Notice what the first thing is. That's this whole folder right here called node modules. Right, you don't need that because when the user runs your program, that folder and those files will automatically be, re be created for you. And again, you'll notice that with this being about 233 meg, if I remove the node modules folder in there, it goes down in size from 233 meg to about one meg. So it's going to load a heck of a lot faster. So in Git Ignore, these are all the things you don't have to load. Now, what we use in here, to my knowledge, it's the same thing in St. Louis, is we use NPM. NPM is called the Node Package Manager. I probably showed you this earlier, but again, if I go out to NPM, js.org or .com. In here, this has been called basically like a grocery store. So if I want to be able to do something, I can go in here and search for it. All right, I think I even gave you this example before, but if I say like Marvel superheroes, They've got some superhero stuff in here, Marvel characters in here. So if I wanted that, what would I have to do? Well, I could come, for example, over here to Marvel characters. I could click on that and it says, oh, that's even got its own GitHub page. 
All right. But the key thing, the key takeaway is right here. I bring it into my program by typing in that line of code. NPM, which means go out to the node package manager. I, which means install. And then Marvel hyphen characters, which means install this package. And as you can see, it's a list of all the comic book characters in the Marvel universe. All right. <coughs> so if I did that and then came in and just wrote this. All right, it would start giving me a bunch of names. Now, that's not that big a thing, but what you'll notice as you go on is this node package manager literally has got around a million different things in it. Yes, one million different things in it. You can bring them any that you need into your program and use them for free. And rather than you having to reinvent the wheel, all right, you can go out and search for something and typically you're going to find it in there. Now, if you need a more detailed explanation, you can go to the homepage on GitHub and there's the actual code that you'll be downloading. But then there afterwards, there are explanations. All right little bit more than you got previously. All right. So let's jump back into here. So we've got, like I said, this git, git ignore file. All right. Then we've got three more files in here. First, this readme is not, you know, it's nothing. It is a readme file. All right. If you don't like it or don't want it, you don't need to put it in. All right. These two files are intimately related to one another. I'm going to look at them in reverse order. The first one is package.json. All right. And this has got information about your application. Notice I called it first react app. So there's its name. All right. It's version zero release one, etc. And I've got these things in here called dependencies. All right. These are all things that you get out of the box from React. If I went in and added another one, I want to show you that. So you'll notice in here everything that I've got in here under dependencies. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things. So we're going to talk about them in just a second. But let's go back just so you can see it. And I'm going to go back into where I just was. And I'm going to grab that line, this NPM I Marvel characters. I'm going to copy it to the clipboard. And now I'm going to come out here and I'm going to paste it into my terminal. So I'm going to paste it in right here. NPM I Marvel dash characters and hit enter. And it'll spin and think about it. It'll take anywhere from, I was going to say 10 to 30 seconds and it's there. All right. Now, how do I know that anything happened? Well, to show you how you can tell is I'm going to come back to here and I'm going to open back up my package.json. And you'll notice what's been added here is Marvel characters. All right. It was added as a dependency in my program, which means I can now use anything that's in that particular package in my program. All right. Now, if I keep going down, you'll notice in here, the next thing says scripts. All right. So this is different ways that you can run the program. I will not lie to you. The only one of these I've never used has been eject. But in just a minute, I'm going to run the program by using the start command. If I am building this as an application that I want people to be able to use and I'm going to put it out on the internet, then eventually after I build it with start and it's working the way I want, I build it again with the build command. What that does is it adds some decorations and some other stuff so other people can use it. If I'm writing a big program in React, one of the things I might want to do is run tests on it. 
All right. So that's when I'd use test. Now, this should work, and I'm hoping it does. But to run this, to run any of these, you come in here and you say NPM followed by the word. So I'm going to type in NPM start and hit enter. Now it's giving me some errors or some messages rather, and here it's coming up. There it is. That's my first React app, and I've done nothing. All right, but add all of the boilerplate stuff. Now, one thing to show you, I'm going to grab that because hopefully you can read it, but in case you can't, I'm going to grab that line. And this is what that line looks like. By default, React likes to run, React likes to run on port 3000. Now, React is kind of quirky in that if you if you are already running something else on port 3000 and you try to run a React app on it, sometimes, sometimes you'll get an error message that says there's already something running on there. All right, you've got to stop it first. Other times it'll say, hey, you've already got something running on port 3000. Would you like to run this application on port 3001? And you can say yes, and boom, it'll work. All right. Now, so what's a port? Basically, it's an area of your computer where different things run. All right. And there's about 10,000 of them on your computer. But React likes port 3000. Now, just to show you this, all the stuff that you see right here, everything that's in here, if I, I can leave this run, it's not going to hurt anything. All right, but I'm going to come back here. And as I showed you before, I'm going to come up and start to clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to go to app.css. First thing I'm going to do, and I'll explain why I'm doing this in a minute. I'm going to change that uppercase A to a lowercase A. Then I'm going to get rid of everything that's in here. It's all gone now. All right, so all I have is this. It says text align center. Then I'm going to go to my app.css file. I don't have a logo anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. It's gone. All right. This is all that boilerplate code that got put in there for me. I don't want any of that. So I'm getting rid of that. And I'm going to only put in here, hello world. That's it. That's all my program is going to say in just a minute. I don't need this app test, so I'm going to highlight it and delete it. It's now gone. This index.css, I'm not even going to touch it. I don't have to do anything with it. This thing, this index, I don't have to do anything with that. Oh, in fact, I will. In just a minute, I'm going to remove this web vitals. I'm going to remove that. So I'm going to get rid of that, and I'm going to get rid of it down here. All right. Now, as I keep working down, I don't need this logo anymore. So I'm going to get rid of that. Then I'm going to go to this Web Vitals. I don't need that right here. So I'm going to get rid of that. Then I've got this setup test. I don't need that. So I'm going to delete that as well. Now, I don't expect you to remember all that. I don't. So we'll do it again a little bit later. But what I want to show you is I'm going to save. And notice as soon as I go back, it says, wow, it's looking in here, and I forgot to remove this from one of the lines. It says an app.js, so let's look. App.js, is the logo in here anyplace? I don't see it in here, but for some reason, it's complaining right now. All right, so we'll have to figure out what that problem is and fix that. All right, now look for it during the break. I'm not worried about it. But what does happen when you do all this stuff that I just showed you is it should automatically go in and update. There it is. I didn't say that was the problem. So I replaced what was there with Hello World. Now, I don't expect that to be, oh, wow, was that fantastic? But what I'm trying to get across to you, 
as we start to get into this is what's in here. We are literally running a live app right now. Now, the only people who can look at it, it's on our machine. But we could create something, use Netlify or something else to put it out on the internet and other people could then run our application. All right. It is nine o'clock. I'm going to give you 15 minutes and we're going to pick it up at 915 and just continue on from here. So I'll see you then. And I've got to refill my drink. So I will be right back.
Um... <laughs> Thank you.
Right then, it is uh, 9.15, so I'm going to continue on. If you came in a little late this morning, um, I suggest that you go out to w3schools.com slash react and take a look at the React tutorial that's out there. And in particular, go down to the React EX ES6 section and take a look at the eight or nine links that are in here. We're not going to do that now, but just so you know. All right. Now, one of the things that is mentioned in here in this tutorial that I'm not going to go over the tutorial, but I just want to mention the verbiage to you, and that is this JSX. And depending on the book or the article you read, JSX either means JavaScript with extensions or JavaScript with XML or something like that. The point of that is this, that if I go back to my app.js file, if you remember, I came back in here and there was a bunch of code in here. We bring that back. This is what was in there. And as you can probably see, this looks mostly, the stuff that's in here looks like regular HTML. What JSX does is it allows you to put HTML right inside of, right inside of your JavaScript. All right. Now that goes against an idea that we talked about a lot earlier in, in the semester, and that was this separation of concerns. But the idea is it's actually considered a good thing to be able to put your HTML in here. All right, now, a couple things to notice. First of all, and it's going to almost sound like what I'm going to tell you right now might sound like it's a mistake. It's not. You can only return one thing in here. So everything that's inside of this div is being returned, but it's all being returned as the div. All right, and if you might say, well, who cares? I just want to show you why that is important. All right, I'm going to again come in here and remove everything that's in here as it was. All right, so I came in here and I added in here, hello world. That's what I did before, and I saved it. And I went over here and, well, Got to run it again, I guess. I thought I didn't know that I stopped the run, but I must have. So I can come back in here. Bring that up. There we go. All right. And type in NPM start, just like we did before. And the only difference is now I put a comma between hello and world. We didn't have one in there before. So there it is. All right. You might be like, well, big deal. Why did you even show us that? I, I did it for a reason, and that is to show you what you cannot do in here. All right. Now I'm going to take this, put it on multiple lines so you can see what's going on in here. All right. So I've got this. Div class name equal app hello world. Well, I just mentioned to you that you can only return one thing in here. Well, what happens? What happens if I try to come in and return more than one thing? I want to show you. 
So I'll, let's, I'll put in another div in here. And I'll just put in there by now. So I now have two divs in here, a div here and a div here. All right, and I'm going to save this and I'm going to try to run it again. It didn't work. Now you might say a big deal. It's a real big deal. All right. In fact, somewhere in here, that's the old version of it. All right. But I, I, if I bring that up, it's like it's not working. So what the heck is happening? Well, what is happening is someplace in here. Let's see if I can find it. The system is going to give me an error, and it's going to say, hey, you can only return one thing in here. You're trying to return two things, two different divs. How can I fix that? I can take this. And I can put it down here. So now what am I doing? Now I have a div inside of a div. So I've got one div that says hello world and another div that says bye now. And it may not seem like a big thing, except now notice that if I come back here and I run this again, Well, better show me something it should because it is now legal. It is bringing it up. I don't know what the problem is, but it may not sound like a big thing, but you can only return one thing in here. All right. Oh, I know why. It's because, look, I've got the word return here. The word return should go down here. That's probably why it didn't work. All right. So let's try that again. File, save all. all. Right, it's recompiling it. It says that it worked. Why it's being like this and not showing me anything? Don't have a flipping clue. All right, but it's the way that it is. All right, so the point is I can put as many things inside of this div as I want to. All right, and that may not sound like a big thing. It is the biggest thing about using this. All right. Now, I want to mention a few things to you. I mean, all you basically need in order to work with React is you need Node, which we already saw, NPM, which you already saw, a code editor, VS Code works well, and Git eventually. So you know. Two thirds of those already, you already know. All right. Node, just so you know, Node.js is actually referred to as a JavaScript runtime. What it does is it allows you to run JavaScript code on a server. And again, that may not sound like a big thing, but literally up until today, 100% of the stuff we were doing, 100% of it, all right, was being run on the client side. We were not running anything on the server. For years, you could only run JavaScript on the client side. You could not run it on the server. Now, back I don't know how many years ago now it was, I think around 12 or 13 years, there was a gentleman, I think it was Roland Dow was his, is his name, that he came in and figured out how to be able to have JavaScript run on both the client side and on the server side. All right, and that's where Node basically got its start. Now I showed you earlier when we created our project, we did a NPX create React app. Well, just to show you this, 
if I go back to where we were before in here, and then if you remember, we went over to here and we went into npmjs.com. All right. And I'm going to type in here, create react app and hit enter. And notice create react app. So what am I telling you? Well, we were using one of the things that exists for us in the node package manager. All right, if I go here, all right, again, it's got its own page. I'm not gonna go to it, all right? Notice there were 120,000 downloads on this last week, all right? And there's a thing getting started, how you can create a new React app and a user guide for this. I'm not going to show you either of them, all right? But we ran the command directly on our machine. So rather than saying npm i create React app, which would have basically take, taken a copy of it and loaded it in our machine, we used npx create React app, which said create a new application for us, all right? There's other ways that you can create a React app other than using create React app. There's a newer thing that's called, I believe it's pronounced VIT, V-I-T-E that you can use. And there's other ways that you can do it as well. Again, is that that important? No, but I just wanna to mention to you that there's more than one way that you can do this, all right? So you might even be, you know, you might even ask, okay, that's all fine. Why are we even learning this stuff? Because React is one of the most in-demand jobs there is right now, and I'm not exaggerating. The average salary for a seasoned React developer, that's one with anywhere from two to five years of experience, is 125,000 a year, all right? And there are tons of openings all over the place because there are tons of companies that use React. Now, as far as, you know, what do you need to learn what React concepts? I've only shown you one, and that was JSX. What we're going to end up doing between this week and the next couple weeks is we're going to explore some of the other concepts that you need to learn and understand to use React. Things like components. Now you might look at say, okay, fine components, what the heck is that? Look at your screen right now, if you would. And let's just take this part of the screen, all right? This whole thing from this orange line on down could be looked at, that's my screen component. My screen component has a component right here, has another one right here, has another one here, 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 and here, other ones, et cetera. So what you end up doing in React is you break up what you wanna do into parts. Those parts are known as components. And when you create these components, you've got your choice. You can make what are either called functional components, or you can make what are called class components. We're gonna be using almost exclusively in here, functional components for two reasons. One, is they're easier to understand than class components. And two, they're newer, they're more modern, and they're the recommended way to create React apps now. All right, then we're going to talk about something called props. Props, P-R-O-P-S, it's short for properties. And it's basically things that you wanna be able to pass into a React application. We'll also talk about state, all right? We've mentioned this word before in our class, and I've mentioned, for example, that my state right now could be things like my current height, my current weight, et cetera. All right, there'll be a, a couple of other things that we'll talk about, all right? And one of the most important is called React Hooks, H-O-O-K-S. 
that you can use to bring things into your program. In particular, we will look at two different hooks, one that is called use state and one that is called use effect. All right. Now, one of the things about React, and I'm not doing a good job of showing it to you because when I brought this up, sorry, when I brought this up here, for whatever reason, all right, when we brought that up, it isn't showing anything, and I don't know why. I'm trying to figure out what the problem is because I don't see anything that I put in there that should actually be wrong. But this is what I had come in here and done before. So let's see. All right, we did this. For some reason, it doesn't like this, and that's okay. But I'm going to come in here, and I've got this hello world. First of all, let's see if we just put that in, just like that, if this runs, or it doesn't run. It still wasn't like something that I've got in there. And I don't know if it's the word return. I don't know what it is. Let's remove the word return. And it still doesn't like something, but, and I'll, I'll, I'll fix this and I'll show you it soon. But the point is when you work with React and you make a change in your program, all right, when you work in React and you make a change in your program, that change is immediately reflected in the program. In other words, you don't have to go back in and refresh the page or reload something or anything like that. That is one of the reasons that React is as popular as it is. All right. Now, you're not going to be able, you know, in, in a couple of weeks, you're not going to be able to learn everything there is about React. It's just going to be you know, we're just going to look at a couple of the things that are in React. So I want to show you a couple of the things that we're going to look at, and I'm hoping they're going to come up. I'm hoping they're going to work, and I'm hoping it, you know, things don't get, don't run any more screwy than they have been. Now, right now, I just stopped my React application from running. I did a control C. I said to stop it, but sometimes when you do that, React still continues to run. So I'm just going to show you a command that I'm going to say npx kill minus port 3000. That command says anything that's running on port 3000, get rid of it, kill it, kill the running process. And it'll come back and it says kill. All right. That's exactly what I want to have happen. All right, so I'm going to close this now. And I've got a couple projects that I've already created. We'll see if they'll come up or if I have problems with them. OK, so let's see. What do we have here? All right, we'll start with this one. It wasn't the one I was going to start with, but it's fine. Right. Are you kidding me? Good gravy. Boy, this is fan friggin tastic initialization error. I'm getting all sorts of errors I've never seen before. Well, this isn't very good, but what I wanted to show you. All right, and we're going to do this. We're going to do this one together as a class and we will get it to work. All right, is we're going to go out to here. This is openweathermap.org. All right. I'm going to have you go out there. You don't have to do it right now, but you will go out to openweathermap.org and you can see I'm signed in as JP Scott, but I'm going to log out. So when I come in, 
and I go out to openweathermap.org, this is what you'll see. All right. And when you log out, and I should have left it there, you, yours will just say sign in. And when you click there, you can sign in, just put in your rank and email and some kind of password that you'll remember. There's no cost for this. You don't ever get an email from them or anything else. But what you will get from them when you need it then is you'll be able to go out and get what's called an API key. All right. What we'll be able to do is to go out and put in information. For instance, we'll put in a city and we'll get weather information about that city. Now, that's what's supposed to happen with the program I just brought up. It doesn't like it. I'm going to try one last thing in here and see if it fixes it. It very well might not. <clears throat> Shouldn't have to do this, but I'm going to see if this fixes the problem that I'm having. No, it didn't. Fantastic. All right. We're going to go out to openweathermap.org. We're going to set up a very simple interface that's going to have the equivalent of a, of a text box and a button. And if I put, for example, Wentzville in there into the text box and I click the button, it'll give us weather information for Wentzville, Missouri. Now you might think, well, who cares? The cool thing is, it's going out and it's using this API, the Open Weather Map API. I'll be able to put in any city in the world. So I could put in Berlin for Berlin, Germany, and it'll give me that one. All right. Now, I mentioned that it's free, and it is. However, if you call it more than 1,000 times in a day, they start charging you. That shouldn't be an issue for anyone in here, all right? All right, another project that we're going to look at. And again, ideally I'm able to show you these, but it's coming up as garbage and I don't know why, is we're gonna create that movie app that we had talked about before. Let's see if I can bring that one up or if I still have problems. Boy, that's fantastic. <sighs> Good golly. Oh, that might be me. Nope, it's not. Good gravy. Well, I'll have to figure out before next class what all these problems are, but that one is going to go out to another site that's online. And that site is the not open weather map. I think it's open mdb.org. It's not the open machine database. All right, they changed the name of it to the moviedb.org. All right, and we're going to be able to go out there and get information about any movie in their list of movies, and they have millions of them. Let's see if I can try something else and, and see if I can get that to work or not. Whether, oh, let's see if we can get this one to work.
All right. Well, that isn't very good, is it? That's the, where is our program? Let's see. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. All right, if you remember when we did um, our second or third, probably our third pretest in class, you were supposed to create a site that was to create uh, a BMI page. There was a BMI page and the, the page for the guessing game. All right, I rewrote the BMI thing in React. I thought it was in here, but for whatever reason, it's not. So I've got to do a better job of running everything before tomorrow morning to make sure that it all works. All right, and I will. All right, let me go back because I'm just going to pivot a little bit and show you what I was going to talk about later. I'll talk about it now. I am going to send this out to each and every one of you by the end of class today. All right, it's a thing that I got sent yesterday and it's got 10 different PDFs in it. And you'll notice the first PDF says the JavaScript for React cheat sheet dot PDF. All right, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going over this. I don't wanna waste your time. You can read it at your own pace, so to speak. But this goes through things like the arrow functions, et cetera and some of the other stuff that's in here, all right? I mean, again, if you say, geez, do I have to read that? You don't have to do anything. But what I'm going to do tomorrow when we start up is I'm going to go over those nine things that are discussed in the W3 Schools React tutorial for ES6. One of those is arrow functions. Another one of those is template literals. All right, so these are all things that you have to learn in order to be able to do this stuff. All right, we've already talked about the double ampersand, the double pipe sign, and even the ternary operator, but they go through those in here as well. Now, these are three different array methods that we went over but we went over fairly quickly. All right, these are known as ES6 array methods, and they are map, filter, and reduce. What they allow you to do is to work with either an entire array inside of React or just the portion of the array that you want to work with. And you can use the map function the filter function and the reduce function in quote, regular vanilla JavaScript, unquote, as well. So we'll look at that. A little bit about working with objects. You had a whole chapter on objects. We talked about objects, all right? But there's a couple more things that we didn't get into in much detail on objects, those being object structuring and the spread operator. So we'll look at that tomorrow. Promises. Promises and async await are one of the things that confuse a lot of people. All right. What promises and async await allows you to do is let's assume that I'm doing some kind of an operation in a program that conceivably will take some time, maybe a few seconds, maybe up to 15 seconds or a half a minute. Do I want my program to be stuck while it's doing those operations, or do I want it to be able to go on and do other things? If I want it to be able to do other things, I can write my code in what's called an asynchronous manner by using a combination of async and await. So what I can do is I can say, for example, if you need to go out 
and go to a database someplace out on the internet, like that open movie thing I just mentioned to you. And let's say that I want you to find every Harry Potter movie. That might take a half a second. That might take five seconds. But when you write code asynchronously, regardless of how much time it takes, you can tell the system, hey, I know you're doing this, but go on and do other things. All right. There's also an important concept that's mentioned in here that we did talk about in class, and that is the fetch API. We looked a little bit at fetch. If you remember, we went through an, a, a program, that numbers program, where you could put a number in and it would tell you facts about that number. All right. Well, fetch is the way all this stuff used to be done. All right, now there's other ways of doing it, including as it says here, using a third party library like Axios. Why am I mentioning this to you? Well, again, if we go back to where we were, which was here, and I search in here and I type in Axios, and I search for it, notice what it comes up with. I can load that into my program as well. And then I'm able to use any of that stuff that Axios allows you to use in my program. All right. Notice last week, over 47 million downloads of Axios. So every time you do an NPMI and you bring something like that into your program, what you are then doing is you're, you're adding to the list of weekly downloads. All right, and it's interesting because that was 47 million downloads last week, which was a week where basically nothing happened in most places on Thursday and Friday. So we're going to look at this one. The modules, you have to learn how to do this how you import and export things, all right? Because typically at the top of your React program, you will have things that you will import. And those things that you import can be your things, or they can be things from React itself that you bring in. But typically what you end up doing is you go and you break your program up into what are called a list of components. And then with those components, you export them from where you created them and you import them into your program. That's what we're going to do. All right, that's pretty much it, I think, for this one that's in here. But like I said, there's a whole bunch of these that are in here, all right? There's 10 of them in here. I'm not going to go through all of them. All right. But that's a great one to start with. Then notice there's also in here the React for Absolute Beginners cheat sheet. I went through some of this stuff today. All right. Let's just take a minute or two and go over this. Notice React is a JavaScript library for creating user interfaces. All right, it is meant for you to create web based UIs or web based user interfaces. That's its job. All right, what do you need to learn in this? Well, really, it's pretty much what I just mentioned to you in that other PDF. If React was made in JavaScript, why don't we just use JavaScript? React was actually made by two gentlemen who worked for uh, for Twitter. No, not Twitter, Facebook, all right? And as it says, JavaScript is 20 years old. It was used to create React, but it was designed for a different purpose than React was. Can I use JavaScript in React apps? Yeah, that's what you do. 
mentioning a bunch of different ways that you can work with React. The only one we're caring about in here is doing a Create React app. There's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. I mentioned this to you already, JSX. That allows you to basically add your HTML into your JavaScript. All right. And as it says, you use it to structure your applications. It's like HTML, but it's not the same thing. All right, I don't want to go into this right now, but you can't, for example, say class equal here. You've got to say class name equals. So there's a few things you have to do. All right, if you create a tag like this, it says you must close it with a trailing slash. So you have to put that in. So if I've got an input tag in there and I leave that part off, I'm going to get an error in my program. There's all sorts of there's styling. There's a lot of other stuff in here. All right. This is what we're going to get into almost immediately, and that is the way that React programs are made, and they are made by taking your application and breaking it down into a series of React components. And as it says, components are created using what looks like a regular JavaScript function. But it's different because rather than returning values, it returns JSX. All right, I'm not going to sit and read to you. There's someone here on why we use it, why it's done. All right. What can components return just about anything? Including other components. You're going to see an example of this one. I'm really sorry I tried running this stuff at home. Most of it ran and it's not running this morning. I don't know why, but I'm going to fix it and we're going to start with that tomorrow morning. All right. These props. Perhaps for lack of better words, are things that you end up passing into a JavaScript routine. So for instance, if I was to create a prop that was called BMI, then in order for me to create that BMI, it would need to know my height and my weight. So those would be what would be passed in as props. All right. Now, this is where it gets confusing. Props cannot directly be changed. That's true, but they can indirectly be changed all right, by using what are called hooks. All right, which are basically going to be things like use state and use effect. All right. <coughs> Here's state. We already talked about this. As it says, it refers to how data in an application changes over time. All right. The significance of state, as it says, is it's a way to talk about your data separately from the user interface. You need to have a way to keep track of state. There's different ways of doing it. One way of doing it is to use what's called a React hook. And that hook is you put in there use state. You bring that in as what's called a hook. And then in your program, you can use it. No pun intended. All right. And there's other ones as well. Notice says the moment events are ways to get data in here. Well, as an example, I already mentioned, even though it didn't work today, that we want to be able to bring in, we want to be able to bring in and create a React program that goes out to the Open Weather Map API. And we want to be able to put in information. And in that information, we want to add a city and click a button that we want it to go out and get us information based on that city. That's what we're going to take a look at. All right. Now, 
just again, two more things I'd like to tell you. And number one, already mentioned this, but I'm going to say it again. I'd like you, please, to go out to openweathermap.org. And if you cannot read that, it's there. All right, go out there and you will not be logged in like me because you don't have an account, but you will click right there. And as I showed you before, when you click, you'll get something like this. All right, come in and put in your Rankin email address and a password you can remember. Submit it. Then what you should get fairly quickly is an email that says you're there. And once you're there, you should be able to then sign in. And once you sign in, all right, notice if I go here, there's my API keys right there. And I can go in and add a new one if I want to. But go out to openweathermap.org and just sign up for an account. Again, it's free. All right, the other one, and I should have gone out here yesterday and didn't, but I tried to have us go out to open movie database. Now, I'm not sure if it changed and it is the movie DB now or not. That's it right there. OMDB API. That's what I want. You'll do the same thing. This one's a little trickier for lack of better words. All right. Because again, API key, okay? So you come in here to, uh, I'm gonna put them both together and I'll send this out to you later. So there's openweathermap.org. And there is also open or omdbapi.com. Open weather and Online Movie Database APIs. They're both APIs. Now, with this one, when you click on here on API key, you want three. You don't want Patreon because you're not, I don't want you to pay anything. Now, when then you sign up, put in your rank and email, your first name, and your last name. And, you know, under use, just put in something like create React projects for school something like that, and then submit. The reason I'm asking you to do this is when I did it, it took almost 24 hours to get a key, all right? In fact, what I had to do is I checked after about 10 hours, it wasn't there, so I had to email this guy, Brian Fritz, and say, hey, you know, I, I got people who need this and I need this, he got it back to me right away. All right. So again, what I'd like you to do for tomorrow is I would like you to go out to these two sites and sign up on both sites. Again, no cost for either site. No, you don't get emails from them asking you to do this or that. All right. They will just both allow you to get different API keys. And an API again. You may or may not remember this, but an API is an application program interface. It is basically a contract between you and the software where the software says, I will provide you with this functionality. However, for you to be able to use this functionality, you will have to use it in the way you are supposed to use it. All right, so when we start tomorrow, I better get these fixed, and I plan on getting these fixed. I'm going to send all this to you in just a minute, and we'll tell you, let's see, it is a meg, so I can email that. I'll email it out with the rest of the thing for today, all right? But tomorrow, we're going to look at, we'll see how far we can get. All right, we're going to write a couple of these from scratch. 
they may make very little sense, but ideally, if we do maybe a half dozen of them this week, it'll make more and more sense as we go on. All right. Sorry that they, they didn't work better than they did, but it is what it is. I'm hoping I feel better tomorrow, and I will see you tomorrow at 8.05. Please remember, your JavaScript final is due tonight by midnight. All right. If you have questions, as always, email me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Have a good rest of the day, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks. Boom. Mm.